Hello and welcome to the Beat Cancer Answer, brought to you by BeatCancer.org, the Center for Advancement in Cancer Education. We believe that 90% of all cancers could be eliminated through environmental and lifestyle choices alone, and science agrees. Unfortunately, most people don't know it. So we provide the education that can help you prevent, cope with, and beat cancer through diet, lifestyle, and other immune-boosting approaches. On every podcast, we will feature an expert who can teach us how to become part of that 90% who could prevent getting diagnosed with cancer. If you already have cancer, we have empowering information for you too. Over the past 40 years, we have helped thousands of cancer patients get back into the driver's seat when it comes to their personal journey of healing cancer and preventing future reoccurrence. On this episode, Deborah Melamed interviews author and celebrity nutritionist Sherry Kalbaum, the Juice Lady. Hello, this is Deborah Melamed, Director of Community Outreach at BeatCancer.org. I'm here today with Sherry Kalbaum. She is a leading authority on nutrition, souping, juicing, and detoxification. Known as the Juice Lady, George Foreman's nutritionist, TV chef, and celebrity nutritionist, she's helped in pioneering the fresh juice movement around the world. Now she's pioneering the hot new trend called souping. A graduate of Bastyr University with a Master of Science degree in Whole Foods Nutrition, Sherry is the author of 34 books, including her latest, Souping is the New Juicing, featuring the wildly successful watercress soup diet, which offers immediate weight loss along with unique health benefits and anti-aging effects. She has sold over 3 million books around the world. Sherry has lectured worldwide on nutrition, juicing, and detoxing, and fasting. Her blogs and books on health and nutrition have helped millions of people live healthier healthier lives. She has appeared on CNN, Fox News, and WCBS New York, along with numerous infomercials, including the one that introduced the George Foreman Grill. Sherry has appeared on QVC for 13 years with George Foreman. Her articles have appeared in New York Daily News, Newsmax, Miami Herald, LA Times, Essence, Vogue, First for Women, and Women's World. You can find find her on Facebook, Twitter, and her website, uh, Juice Lady Sherry, C H E R I E dot com. So, welcome, Sherry. We are so excited to learn about juicing from an expert. Oh, thank you, Deborah. My favorite topic because I've seen so many wonderful things happen, so many healings when people get started juicing and changing their diet. Wonderful. And you are known as the juice lady. So we want to find out how you got started juicing, if you could tell us. I would be so happy to. I started a long time ago in my late twenties when I was really ill, I had chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia. I started juicing because no one could help me with those conditions. And they still really don't know what to do regarding fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue syndrome. And so I bought my first juicer after talking with some people at health food stores and getting uh, some words of encouragement and hope and realizing that I needed to change my diet. My diet was all wrong. I loved junk food and fast food and I didn't like vegetables. I loved sugar, anything sweet, and that is just uh, a setup for really poor health, you know. So when I got my first juicer, I decided I'd really go for it, all uh, all in, (laughs) as you say. And I did a five-day juice fast, and on the fifth day, my body expelled a tumor about the size of a golf ball with blue blood vessels attached. Wow. Totally got my attention. (laughs) Um, We now know that those blood vessels, it's called angiogenesis, and they um, grow out, you know, to feed the tumor from other um, blood uh, vessels in the body. And something, it looked like something had just cut all those off and it looked um, like about five of those blood vessels were attached to that tumor. 
I knew nothing about nutrition at the time. I was totally flabbergasted. I did not have it tested, but my belief is that this was nothing good. My mother died of cancer when I was six years old, and I truly believe I was following in her footsteps right. of the kind of diet she had, um, the kind of lifestyle she had, I was following. And I don't believe I would be here today at all if it were not for my juicing. Did so you feel I thought after, after that five day fast, did you feel <laughs> energized? You know, I was, I thought I was going to, and I didn't, I was okay. detoxing. Right. Nobody had told me about detoxing and I was getting rid of toxins. And so I had some even worse days than when I started because right. all these toxins that had built up in my body were pouring out. I had some better days also, but I was determined uh, to stick with it. And my father said, oh, I, I had to move home because I couldn't work any longer. And he said, I think you're killing yourself. And I said, well, if I'm going to go, I feel like I'm dying anyway. I'm right. going to go on carrot juice <laughs> and all these vegetable juices that I'm making. And But it took me about three months. But one day I woke up and thought, wow, somebody gave me a new body in the middle of the night. I had this burst of energy, uh, all this color in my face. I felt like jogging. I I could barely, I couldn't even walk around the block before then. So I knew I'd really hit on something pretty powerful. Right. And that's what I've been telling people that story ever since. Wow, that's amazing. So, you know, one, oh, one thing I wanted to say really quickly, I called that a cure. And thinking of something as a cure, yeah, you did it, you don't have to do it anymore, is kind of my thinking of cures. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize that this needed to be a way of life. And I started slowly getting uh, some of this old stuff, foods back in my diet, and my symptoms started coming back, and it scared the living daylights out of me. Because once you taste that vibrant health, you don't ever want to lose it. And I realized this has got to be a way of life. Uh, I can't go back to what I was doing, and neither can anybody else. (laughs) You just juiced for five days, and then did you move on to adding food, solid food then? Thank you so much for asking, because I did leave that out, and yes, I did. I kept juicing then after that, and I added in a lot of salads. I um, tried to make uh, a lot of raw vegetable big salads, and I did some steamed vegetables and stir fries and brown rice, but that was about what I ate for that three months. I'm not totally vegan now, but I followed a pretty close vegan diet um, for that three months. Wow, that's really vegan with juicing, lots of juice. I would juice uh, um, enough to drink throughout the day, so like maybe a quart to two quarts of juice. So you gave your body what it needed, and it got rid of what it didn't want anymore, (laughs) right? (laughs) (laughs) That is for sure. And that falls right into what I teach, and I know many other people teach too, and you probably do as well, that there are two basic things that contribute to disease, toxins and overload of toxins and and, um, uh, unhealthy things, overloading the body, and a deficiency of nutrients. And you address those two issues, and the body will then do what it's called to do and designed to do, and that is to heal. Right. And I think when we have sugar, then, we lose our taste for vegetables and food. It take, kind of takes your appetite away, and you lose, you lose the taste for that, and then you're missing all these nutrients, and you're bringing your immunity down. All of the above. Right. Sugar is um, known to directly contribute to cancer. Otto Warburg was the one who first did all the research on that, that cancer cells survive on what's called glycolytic fermentation or uh, feeding on sugar. And so um, sugars do feed cancer and it's uh, their favorite food along with yeast and parasites and, uh, and it's very addictive. I wrote the book Sugar Knockout, which I highly recommend for everybody that is uh, craving sugar, wants to get off the sugar train and find a new way of living. Um, But sugar is so addictive. All these studies came out on uh, the fact that it's as addictive as cocaine or even heroin. And um, in fact, the rats in the studies would leave their cocaine drip and go over for the sugar drip because it's that addictive. So when we're getting off of it, we have to uh, have some guidelines, know what to do, know that there is um, a sugar detox 
kind of feeling symptoms for a while and know how to replace it and how to power through it. And you can definitely do it. I did it. So many other people have done it. But you're right. It wrecks our taste buds. And we lose our taste for the subtle um, flavors of all our wonderful vegetables and herbs in particular. And we um, don't taste them any longer. And once we get off of the sugar and all of the preserved foods, our taste buds start to come alive again. And we can taste the the salty flavor of celery, for example, or the bitter of arugula uh, or water, the peppery of watercress, things like that, right. that all become really good and kind of exciting to us. Um, it is a, it's it is like exciting. our mouth comes alive. Right. Absolutely. I did want to ask you, um, then you see a lot of people with smoothies with a whole bunch of fruit in it. Um, and then many people think that blended drinks, in the, from their Vitamix or their Ninja is a juice, but it's not. It's it's more of a smoothie. So can you explain to us the difference between Yes, I get asked this smoothie? all yeah. the time. <laughs> Thousands of people want to know the answer to this. So I want to address the first thing that you said about smoothies with all this fruit in them, and that is usually what people put mostly. In fact, a lot of people that I talk with um, – don't even put vegetables in their smoothie, or if they do, maybe it's just a little bit of leafy greens. And and the rest is uh, fruit and often very sweet fruit like bananas, pineapple, um, uh, or maybe um, tropical fruit, things like that. Um, They may use an orange juice base uh, or um, maybe they use some kind of a plant milk base, but they're getting a ton of sugar. That is a lot of sugar. Anyone that's fighting cancer, you should not be having any of those kinds of fruits. Only berries are allowed on so many of the programs that I've looked at that have been successful. Um, So you want to get all the sweet fruit out of your diet. And actually, if you're healthy, even all that sweet fruit is not good for you. Uh, A piece or two of fruit a day, And usually I recommend low sugar fruit. So back to now part two of that question, which is, is that juice? Because so many people that have been sold a Ninja or a Vitamix have been told this is juice. It's juice with your fiber and you must have that fiber. So you need to blend everything up, not juice it up. So there are two things, several things I want to say about that. First of all, um, just to make a vegetable concoction, is not very tasty for very many people. Um, And um, for my concoctions of juices, I add lemon or lime juice to flavor it, not any fruit in mine. And if when you put no fruit in those vegetable concoctions that you blend up and then you throw in a lemon or a lime, it's just, to me, not palatable at all. Um, And then secondly, People have um, uh, found that have looked at the juicing, doctors like even Dr. Mercola looking at juicing versus blending, the juice gets right into the cells. And one of the doctors I just did an interview with said, it's like an infusion of nutrients, it's cellular. It's getting those nutrients into your cells with the juice. It's broken down. Your body doesn't have to work hard on that fiber, um, extracting the juice from the fiber. And then the fiber drinks are, are colon related. We need fiber for our colon. So I say to people, do both, but make sure you do some juicing. And especially if you're doing um, any kind of program to fight disease like cancer or anything else, if you've got anything going on in your body that you're trying to heal, You want that juice because you want to get those nutrients right into your cells. And so many people today have compromised nutrition, not nutrition, compromised digestion, where they're not absorbing the nutrition as they should. Things are passing through their body, undigested or non-absorbed. And they used to say you are what you eat. Now the saying is you are what you digest. And so many people are just not digesting their foods properly. But that's where juice comes in. Your wonderful, beautiful, um, nutrient-rich vegetable juices, it, they're like pre-digested foods. Your body doesn't have to work hard on them. It can get right in, get right through your digestive system and right into your 
bloodstream and getting right into your cells. And that's why I am so adamant about juicing that you've got to start juicing. And there's one little um, side I want to tell you, Deborah. I know you'll really be excited to hear this, and I think everyone will. I talked this week with one of my um, people that is part of What to Eat and Juice When You Have Cancer group. I'm running these um, all the time, four-week programs. She said she just had come from seeing her oncologist at a standard hospital. It's not known to be holistic or functional medicine or anything. Her oncologist said to her, you're going to need to start juicing because it's the only way you're going to get all the nutrients that you need. Wow. Oh, huh? That's wonderful. <laughs> I hope that's a sign of the time. I hope things keep moving in that direction. It's my prayer. I don't know. I think we've got a long uphill road <laughs> for that right. to take place all across the nation, but it's a start, and I was very excited about it. That is very exciting. So the juicing, if, you're, if your health is compromised, your body's just absorbing all those nutrients much easier, much quicker, and to a, a much greater extent than if the fiber was blocking and your body had to work hard then. Is that what you're yes. saying? Okay. Yes, I am, and that is correct. And it isn't that you can't do a fiber-rich shake. You can't. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. That's you can do the green too. smoothie, Okay. but you also need to do the juicing. And the juicing should come first then. Yes, More absolutely. More on an empty stomach? Mm. That's when it's best because okay. it doesn't have to compete then with right. um, other things you've eaten. So I try to um, juice, and I did this morning, and I do um, every morning when I'm home. First thing in the morning, um, after my cup of herbal tea, (laughs) I have my juice, and it gets right into your system, and you can feel it working. You can. I've done it. I do, and you can feel it working, and you feel this flood of nutrients. You really do, and it's a wonderful feeling. And then you may still want to eat something maybe maybe 30 minutes later. Is that what you do? Mm-hmm. Yes. But, but you just I don't feel like you have cravings or like you quite need to eat as much because you feel like you just got a lot of what you needed already. So that's the feeling I got anyway. Oh, I get that feeling too. And I never, um, when I'm home, eat a big breakfast because I've had the juice. Or sometimes I have juice and a green smoothie. Uh, So I do both oftentimes. But how I make my green smoothie, I make it taste good. So I juice up um, a whole lot of different vegetables and put some lemon, as I said, in there. And I put big chunks of ginger. And when I can find fresh turmeric, I put a a chunk of Mm -hmm. that in there. And then I drink some of the juice sometimes and pour some of it into the blender and add an avocado. And then if I have some finer little leafy greens that don't juice up as well, I add those to the green smoothie, blend all that up and add some maybe ground uh, almonds, raw almonds on top. Okay. or some sunflower seeds, that to me is just wonderful, wonderful breakfast. That's more of your smoothie recipe that you do after. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes, it follows my juice. Mm. Do you ever do flax seeds? I'm just curious. Oh, yes. And um, Wednesday was my um, fasting day, and I, in the afternoon, made a pick-me-up um, shake with some almond milk, and I had flax seeds in there and some greens and a bunch of good stuff, but no sweeteners. That sounds Black delicious. seeds are wonderful. Omega okay. three. That sounds great. So let's talk about juicers because I know everyone is going to get excited and then they're going to want to try and figure out what kind of juicer to get. Mm-hmm. So maybe you can tell us what a juicer does and what the best juicer would be. Yes. So a juicer extracts the pulp um, <clears throat> or the fiber and separates it from the juice. So the juice will pour out one spout, one place, and the pulp will be ejected in another place. And what is the best juicer? I have boiled it down to one simple thing. It's the one you'll use every day, right? right? (laughs) So now let me talk about the difference, though, the differences in juicers, because this is where people get so confused. Everybody is selling their juicer, of course, that manufactures them. 
And so they're all going to be the best. <laughs> so then everybody's saying, hmm, now what do I do? Uh, so lots of people are told that you should never buy a centrifugal juicer because it destroys more of the nutrients. That probably is true um, because of the fast spinning. It doesn't heat it up now. There's cooling fans in there. It used to heat, some of them used to heat it up. Now it doesn't heat it, but um, exposes it to more oxygen I've heard that. Which, um, <clears throat> and friction, which can kill more nutrients. But that, uh, surprisingly, the centrifugal one is, is the one I use every day. Because it's fast, it's easy to clean, and I am so busy. And I know if I had to take a lot of time, like if it took me 15 minutes to make my, my juice for my husband and I, I would not be juicing many days because I just don't have that much time. So I want one that's easy to use and easy to clean. And if I ha- have to add a little more cucumber or celery or um, uh, an extra carrot or whatever I need to add to that, I'll do it for time uh, savings. But there are people who say, no, I want perfect and I have time. And, and so what is perfect then? Um, I, there's no perfect, but close to uh, is the pre- kind of juicer that presses. So we hear a lot about cold press juices. And yes, definitely more nutrients are preserved in those types of juicers. There are the slow juicers called... Um, are they the slow masticators? Yes, I and they're the upright ones. That's what I have, ones. the Omega. Yes, Omega has an upright, uh, slow, and then it's got the horizontal one um, that is the single auger yeah. <laughs> that presses. I think that's what I mm-hmm. have, yeah. Yeah, those take a little longer to make um, the juice because you have to cut things yeah. up in smaller pieces. <laughs> they do. <laughs> yeah, um, but they're all good. Um, there's so, so many in that category from the Norwalk, very expensive, the Angel, um, over $1,000, to the more medium price like uh, Omega, Champion, Samsung, um, Green Star, and so forth. So everybody needs to just do an inventory of what's going to work for you. Do you have that little bit of extra time that you can take? or not. But one thing I can tell you, regardless of the type of juicer you get, if you're juicing, it's going to be better than anything else you could have, even if you've lost a few more nutrients from your centrifugal one. Okay. Well, that gives everyone a good starting point, I think. Um, I'm just thinking about acidity and alkalinity too. And many people are very acidic today because Meat and dairy and coffee and alcohol are very acidic, and that makes up most of people's diets. So in thinking about cancer, cancer thrives in an acidic diet. So juicing, how can we juice to make the body less hospitable for cancer? How How does it balance the body's pH? So juices, our vegetable juices are very alkaline, which is wonderful. And surprisingly, lemons and limes are very, very alkaline in their final breakdown. And how they measure that, they call it the final ash of metabolism, what's left over after digestion. And that's how, uh, with measuring different minerals, that's how they know if a food in the final breakdown is acidic or alkaline and so the vegetables are alkaline lemons and limes are alkaline um uh, some fruit is more alkaline like the berries would be in that category some um, of the sweeter ones tend to be a little more on the acidic side and so we want to alkalize our bodies and bring them into a ph balance so many people are very acidic, over acidic, and never ever know that they are, but they've got a, a really great environment for cancer cells to thrive. So we want to bring um, the balance, and that's where the juices come in. And I've looked at way back in time some studies from 1905 on through the 1950s. And there were doctors that were using juicing back then to heal cancer and to heal all sorts of diseases. 
And we really lost our way when the pharmaceuticals became very popularized because that's where the money was, and they quit studying juicing. Uh, But people were being healed. And um, even though they didn't talk a lot then about acidity and alkalinity, that's what was happening. One of the things, there are many things that were happening, but one of the things was that it was bringing the body into a, a better pH balance, a balance that where the cancer could not thrive. Oh, that's amazing. Okay, great. Um, and people can go on your website and, and they can look up your cancer program and work with you. Yes, I'm really excited about my program. It's called What to Eat and Juice When You Have Cancer. And so many people are so confused. You know, should I do ketogenic? Should I do juicing and all raw? Can I combine juicing with ketogenic? Um, Yes, all of the above. Yes. And my goal is to get as much juice, like two quarts of juice, if Uh, that is at all possible, into people's diets. And yes, you you can go um, modify ketogenic. Uh, With the juices, you couldn't do the really restricted ketogenic of 90% fat. But what is recommended so often on the ketogenic is fats that I don't recommend. I mean, butter balls and uh-huh. all this butter and, and or ghee and tons of animal fats and I just don't see that to be healthful okay. but you can do a higher fat with coconut oil olive oil I add often uh, coconut oil organic coconut oil to a smoothie or a shake um, I add olive oil two things and that's the dressing I put on my salad olive oil and apple cider vinegar which is the raw apple cider vinegar is also very good Um, so you we can get a lot more fat and avocados and um, some nut or seed butters will give us fat more fat Mm -hmm. so it's good to bring up the fat um, uh, minimum protein somewhere between five and 15 percent protein and um but i like to see more juice but not so the, the fruit juice, juice kind of stays pure and then you can put some of the fat in the smoothie or you can the salad. yes you can and i've had people um, who are wanting to go more ketogenic because they have seen the research or maybe they're seeing a holistic or functional medicine doctor who's recommended that because there are a lot of studies now Mm -hmm. on ketogenic and and uh, how effective it is in fighting cancer because cancer cells can't survive on on ketones that will kill them and uh, so if you can get into even the low end of ketosis and there are all all sorts of ways to measure that from um, the blood test to the breath to the urine strips, which is um, least accurate, but will give you an idea of where you're going, at least getting started. They're the cheapest too. Um, So if you can get into even the low end of ketosis, um, your body is now burning ketones for fuel instead of carbs, and that is a good thing when it comes to cancer cells and killing them off. Burning fuel. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. But I hate to see uh, people not have their vegetables and on the highly highly restricted only five percent carb ketogenic diet you would have to um, reject most of your vegetables even your very low carb and I don't see that to be helpful because I found a ton of research on all the different vegetables and how they fight cancer and how they fight angiogenesis absolutely so you kind of so so people can kind of because that does get confusing and people get lost so they can go on your website mm-hmm. and get help with how to yes. do this. They absolutely can, and I guide people through. So, in what to eat and juice when you have or, uh, cancer is um, it, four lessons. So it goes over a four week period, and 
we start off talking about juice fasting and then um, juicing and adding in raw foods in week two. Okay. So these are two powerful weeks of getting started with lots of res- recipes and coaching. I do Facebook coaching for our private group, <clears throat> and I also do the teleconference call once a week where people can ask questions. And then in week three, I introduce um, how to do a modified ketogenic diet and what fats um, I recommend as being good, and I just name most of them, and uh, how to incorporate that in into your program. And there are people who are even like melting maybe a tablespoon of organic coconut oil in their morning herbal tea, right. putting a tablespoon maybe in their smoothie, um, making sure that their salad dressing is um, organic virgin olive oil-based, Things like that, getting more fats into the diet, and I think that's the way to go. And I guess it would it would good for any disease, autoimmune diseases, <clears throat> any Absolutely. disease really. Yes. Well, and in fact, um, the ketogenic diet is what is recommended for the I, I wouldn't really call it the cure, but the control of um, uh, epilepsy. Okay. People who have seizures have okay. had great uh, and promising results on the ketogenic diet. Hmm. Okay. Well, that, that's a wonderful <laughs> resource then. So um, what about one thing that people with cancer get confused about is the sugar and juicing maybe carrots or things that contain higher sugar. Can you talk about that for a minute? Yes. <clears throat> and here's uh, the place where yes and, and and but, right? Because carrots are very high in sugar. And for me personally, I do so poorly on sugar. Uh, even carrots, I have to dilute with other vegetable juices like celery, zucchini, cucumber, uh, ones that give a lot of juice and water that will dilute it. That being said, and for some uh, others out there, I believe we'll have to be um, cautious and use small amounts of carrot. But there are studies that go way back, and I had mentioned those earlier, um, and Dr. Kirshner is one who had done quite a bit of work with juicing. He started off at... um, working with TB patients at a hospital, giving them green juices and their diet at the hospital was macaroni, spaghetti, and other cooked foods. I went, oh, my word. No wonder they weren't getting well. When he added in uh, green juices, and um, I I couldn't find how much he gave them, but he added green juices to their diet, they started getting well. And in his private practice, he also added in a glass, that's where the measurement was, one glass of carrot juice to the greens. It didn't say whether he mixed it in with the greens or had them drink it separately, but he started curing cancer. He cured a person of leukemia. All sorts of different conditions were cured. With the carrot juice being added in, he found it to be more effective. So I know there's all the work that Max Gerson did with carrot juice as well. You know, so we're all so individual, and I think we have to really monitor our own bodies, get in tune with them, what they're saying to us. I don't reject carrots. I, for, for me and for the people I work with, I just dilute them with cucumber and celery. <clears throat> Excuse me. I got a little bit high water content. Yeah. Um, So I put them with the high water content vegetables, and I recommend that for a lot of people. Okay. I just got a sip of water. Let's talk about what are the best vegetables to juice and your favorite combinations and and maybe um, what people can start with because I know um, maybe to get used to your palate used to it, there might be an easier way to start. Yes, there is, and and they should taste good because if you've never juiced before, 
It can be a shock when you're adding in all those grains uh, to your palate that was used to a lot of sugar. <clears throat> so I tell people start with a, a good tasting blend. And I use carrot and lemon. I put ginger with that so it spices it up a bit. Then I add cucumber and celery. Sometimes zucchini. Um, I add leafy greens. Chard or kale are great. And um, if I have a broccoli stem left over, like I maybe steam um, the florets the night before, I'll juice that. Whatever you have left on hand. Tops of radishes. Radishes are great. So you need some good recipes, though. Never juice a radish I mean, or a broccoli base. I have to try that. <clears throat> yeah. I get organic yeah. broccoli, and sometimes I peel it and chop it up and eat it, but... Sometimes I throw it out, and that's a shame because it's very expensive. So It is. So now you can juice the base. You can juice the hard stems of asparagus. You can oh, juice the parts no, of cauliflower that. that you throw away. Oh. <laughs> Say it's good savings, and it's good for you. We're not wasting anything, and we're getting all that great nutrition. Okay, wonderful. Um, let's Okay, so that these are some of the good vegetables and some... You mentioned a combination. Um, I'm just trying to think if somebody's just starting out. I know the carrot, lemon, ginger, cucumber, celery tastes good. I've never juiced zucchini, but that has a little bit of sweetness to it. How much, how many leaves of kale and Swiss chard? Can you start out just adding a few or maybe some romaine? Yes. To make and it that's a little what I recommend. Palatable? Yes. I recommend when you start off one or two leaves okay. is a good start because you can just overwhelm your taste but you're not used to all these more bitter or strong tasting greens. Right. Then when you get used to it, you can add a little more in. Okay. But one or two leaves or a little handful of spinach would be good, things like that, and then just work your way up. Okay. Do you want to share with us some stories of healing where people have been successful? Oh, I'd love with to. Fresh juices. I have so many stories. I, I'd love to start with Michelle Bracy. She's been working with me. She came to our spring retreat this year. She has leukemia and she's been fighting it since 2013. Wow. She um, initially went to a number of naturopathic doctors and tried to work uh, holistically as much as she could, but she was just not getting better. She wasn't getting worse, but she wasn't getting better. She was just kind of holding her own at that point. Mm -hmm. And then she started juicing, and she went on a three-week juice fast, and her white blood cell count plummeted. She started feeling so much better. She was making progress. And then everyone around her started complaining that she was getting too skinny and she better start eating again. So then she stopped the juicing, and then her, her white blood cell count went way back up again, and she wow. started not feeling well. And that's when she knew she had to do something that was going to just really change her life, you know, and inspire her. So she came to our retreat, and we do, we do a three-day juice fast at our Juice and Raw Foods retreats. And we um, start with raw foods, gourmet raw foods, I should say, and we end with raw foods, and we juice fast for three days in the middle. And we have wheatgrass juice twice a day along with our vegetable juices. She had such a great week. She felt so good when she left. She went home determined that she was never going to stop juicing after that and doing her two quarts of juice a day, which is what I recommend, which is based on what some of the old-time studies recommended was two quarts of juice a day she's doing her wheatgrass juice and she is making progress her neutrophils have come up they're moving up her white blood cell count is moving down and she is she said I feel fantastic so she is a um, story in progress but I've had many other people that have had amazing stories one lady the most dramatic story I've ever heard got my book and started juicing. She had been sent home to die. She had cancer throughout her body and they'd given her no hope. She had a tumor in her brain. I forget. I think um, 
cancer in her, was, it had spread to her liver. I forget where all it was, and she had a mass somewhere. And so she went on a three-week juice fast. And I actually, I think it was a little longer because it was about three and a half weeks. She said all of a sudden, in the middle of that week, she felt that ripping and kind of tearing in her body and all this intense pain. And she thought, oh, that Sherry Kalbaum, she's killing me on this juice diet. And all of a sudden, the tumor fell out on the floor. Wow. That is fascinating. So, it really is. that The body just got rid of it. Isn't that something so amazing? So people ask me, where did it come from? I don't know, and I didn't want to ask her. <laughs> right. But, <laughs> so this is why free. the juice is healing, I guess, because because I guess there's an environment then where, where cancer just can't thrive, so your body just expels it. It just, isn't, it just can't live there anymore. That is exactly it. And here's part of it, too, and what I saw with that tumor that my body released on the fifth day of juicing. And juice fasting, I should say. Things uh, are in celery that are um, anti-angiogenesis, meaning they cut off the blood supply to uh, those little tubules that feed the cancer. It's in celery. There's some in um, carrots. That's why I don't uh, reject the carrot juice, even though they're higher in sugar. Several other vegetables. Kale is one on the list that is just a powerful vegetable. And so they're cutting off the blood supply that's going to those tumors. And that in part is like one person put it in one of the reports I read, like surgery on the inside that is so non-invasive. You know, it's like Satan, uh, uh, um, nature's scissors cutting inside where we can't see, can't go, but there's no... No worries, no side effects. No only recovery. Great, <laughs> I know, only That's great amazing. results. Hell I have one more story I'd love to tell you. Okay. And this is, lady did not have cancer, but she um, was sent home to die because nobody knew what to do for her. Her naturopath um, didn't, uh, couldn't figure out what was going on, as well as her allopathic doctor. She had gained 50 pounds of water weight. Nobody knew why and nobody knew what to do. She'd lost all her energy. She couldn't even walk down her driveway to go get her mail. And she just felt like she was dying. They didn't know what had caused this and they didn't know what to do to bring about healing. So they both told her she probably should just get her affairs in order. And she came to me just absolutely desperate. So I did a diet diary and found that her diet was pretty good overall, but she wasn't juicing. So I had her add a green juice before each meal. So three times a day, she drank a great big glass, like 10 to 12 ounces of green juice. It was a little over a month later, I heard from her, and she had lost almost all of that 50 pounds of water weight. She was walking a mile a day, and she had just finished chopping and stacking a cord of wood. Wow. (laughs) That juice turned her whole life around where nobody else could do it. That's incredible. Well, I'm I'm getting inspired. (laughs) (laughs) I know. When I tell the stories, I inspire myself. (laughs) In fact, I was sitting here thinking... I need to go make another glass of juice. <laughs> Absolutely. It just kind of, I think you just have to hardwire the habit and, and then the better, the more you do it, the better you feel and the better you feel, the more you want to do it. <laughs> so I I did want to ask you about your, your program uh, with souping. If you can tell us about that, because that sounds really exciting too. Souping is exciting. And that uh, word, souping is kind of a new word that's come on the scene to it's a catch-all for blended drinks the concoctions that people are making in their ninjas and their vitamixes that maybe isn't really a a smoothie you know Uh, to raw soups to gently warm that would still be considered raw to the old-fashioned simmer all day on the top of your stove soup (laughs) and so I've got everything uh, uh, in my book souping is the new juicing 
So lots of recipes. And what I've found is that lots of people are responding saying, oh, I love soup. I love, you know, to make a, a pot of soup and have um, a lot of soup maybe frozen in batches mm -hmm. so that you can pull it out on a busy night and warm it up. And especially when the weather gets cooler, we think of something warming and nurturing. And so I call this the healthiest comfort food I think you could find. And many people are saying to me, too, when they're fighting disease, they just need some kind of comfort food, you know, yes. something that's warm and nourishing and speaks of love and home and soup does the trick. And it, it especially if you puree them after you make them. So it's all uh, blended and creamy without the cream. Uh, it's, it's good for you. It's broken down so much that it, it helps your digestive system and you're getting a lot of the nutrients. So even if you're simmering it all day and you, you know, you're not making a raw soup or something that's just barely warm, um, it's still going to give you lots of minerals and phytonutrients and certainly a good thing to add into your program. Uh, many people are doing a soup a day because they just feel like they need something warm and nourishing, especially uh, in the fall and as the winter gets oh, yeah. uh, around, you know, coming around, they want something warming. Do you do beans in your soup at all? I have some recipes with beans. It depends on a person's digestive system, you okay. know, as to whether they can handle more of the legume family, right. beans, lentils, and split peas. If you or can. Maybe if they're it, sprouted, it might be a little easier. Yes, sprouted is great. I love sprouted anything, releases more of the nutrients. So um, you can do those as raw. I've got many raw soup recipes too for the people who want to try and stay as raw as possible. Okay. And okay, so so tell us about the watercress soup diet. I love the watercress soup diet for all of the amazing health benefits. Watercress is that little um, delicate green leafy decorative item on your plate in restaurants, right? That's beautiful. <laughs> the one that people rarely eat. And now it's just come full center to the center of the plate. I started looking at watercress when I was working on my souping book and found all of these studies about watercress from weight loss to anti-aging in one, uh, they called it the natural facelift. These studies were done in the UK wow. to um, thyroid, helping the thyroid gland. Watercress is one of your richest vegetable sources of iodine. And so that is really, really good for um, the thyroid gland. And um, also, it's been shown to lower blood sugar. So when I found all these various studies, I started um, looking for uh, the best watercress soup recipe I could find. And I came up with my own. And I kind of gleaned it from a variety of ideas. So my watercress soup um, has almond butter in it organic almond butter, which makes it creamy and really tasty, and it has some lemon juice in it too. And I decided this summer that I would run a pilot study to see what kind of results I could get for weight loss. So I did a three-week program, and the average weight loss was seven pounds in three weeks, and that was a replica of the UK study. They did a six-week, and the average was 14 pounds, so about the same. My biggest loser lost 19 pounds in three weeks, oh, and amazing. Uh, one of my ladies, April, she ended up uh, in the cover story of Woman's World magazine about my watercress soup diet, and she had um, been diagnosed with hypothyroid, and she was borderline hypothyroid and didn't want to take the medication, so she had been looking for a way to heal her thyroid naturally and lose weight because her thyroid was sluggish. She was not losing weight. It took her two years, she said, to lose eight pounds. In three weeks, she lost seven pounds on my program and turned her thyroid health around. It kicked into gear. She got her energy back. 
she felt like working out and um, she said it was just a, a life changer for her. Two of my ladies had um, high blood sugar. One lady was at 359 and went down to 116 in a week. My other lady was at 240 and went down to 140 in the first week. And they um, had to monitor their blood sugar all the time. So they had major correction in blood, blood sugar balancing. And there is a study showing that watercress does that as well. There are also lots of studies on watercress and cancer, fighting cancer. It's a powerful uh, cruciferous vegetable with many, many healing properties. So, so many people that did my watercress weight loss soup diet not only lost weight, but gained so many health benefits. And we did a survey at the end um, to find out, too, did anybody notice changes in their skin? Because there was that UK study where people um, called it the anti-aging diet as well because they got rid of wrinkles or there's, some of them noticed um, the collagen improving, you know, that layer just beneath the skin that gives the skin its youthful appearance. All of nearly all of my ladies, 55 ladies, reported changes in their skin that were for the positive, and also some changes in hair and uh, better nail growth. So it was really quite amazing what happened. It was like a physical overhaul for a lot of people, not just the weight loss, but so much more, and uh, an increase in energy too. Quite it's a few a, people know. Watercress is a really that. potent detoxifier, isn't that true? Yes, very potent detoxifier. So I also highly recommend that if you're doing any kind of detox program to include the watercress soup or more watercress in your diet. I also had a watercress berry smoothie that people had for breakfast, and um, that was people liked that a lot. Huh. Well, that that sounds really exciting. Um, this is such great information. So people can go on your website. They can find out more about your souping is the new juicing and your watercress soup diet. And they can also check your website for a program if they want to do juicing for cancer. Um, yeah. I saw your website. It had so much information on it. So I encourage people to go on juiceladysherry.com. And Sherry also has a Facebook page and a Twitter page. So you can find her there. And this is just such such exciting information, Sherry. And it, it just is very inspiring because we're just helping the body heal itself and just providing the nutrients and the environment to allow the body to do what it knows how to do. That is exactly right. I, it, to me, this is such an exciting frontier. I'm doing my own little research all the time, um, looking at how this particular program of adding juice in and the different foods is healing people. And I'm just amazed at what the body will do when we give it the right nutrients in the right environment and we get rid of the toxins. It just does exactly what it was designed to do. It heals. Um, so I just wanted to mention um, people can join the watercress soup diet. I have a four-week program for that. Uh, I have the what to eat and juice when you have cancer four-week program. I also have the 30-day detox, which is a four-week program. I lead you through detoxifying your colon. Week two is liver and gallbladder with a parasite cleanse that is part of that. And week three is um, lung and kidney bladder. Week four is lymphatic system and skin and blood. And when you're done with that program, you will have covered the organs and supporting organs of elimination throughout your body, all of them. And people feel amazing after they do that program. Is and that then my husband. Juicing program? Uh, there's a, a lot of juicing. And then as you go, 
um, into the program, after the first couple of weeks, you can add more foods. But week one, you kick off with a three to five day juice fast. Okay. And then you keep juicing, but you can add in vegan foods. Okay. And the same for week two. Um, week three, some people that w- are not fighting cancer and are working hard, you can add in some wild-caught fish. You know, And by week four, um, you can add in a little bit, if you need to, of um, free-range organic chicken in okay. addition to all of your vegetables. And I have lots of recipes. I also have a five-day juice fast if somebody just wants to have uh, guidance on juice fasting, you can sign up for that. Um, And uh, that starts on the first of every month, first Monday of every month, we start uh, juice fasting. So lots of programs. And if you forget how to spell Sherry, go to juiceladyinfo, info.com. I did that because there's so many ways to spell Sherry and people forget. That's wonderful. Okay. Thank you so much. It was just such a pleasure having you on the program, and I think everyone got in- incredible amounts of information, and and we have a starting point to get to get healthy, optimize health. So thank you so much. Oh, you're so welcome. Oh, and two, I'll just quickly mention you can sign up for my free newsletter and get some free gifts, and uh, then you'll get weekly tips and recipes as well. Oh, that's great. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. It was great to be on your show. I love the work you're doing, Deborah, and I just wish you all the best in your work with helping people beat cancer. Thank you for being like-minded and spreading great information. Thank you so much for joining us on the Beat Cancer Answer. If you learned just one thing today about how to prevent, cope with, or beat cancer, then we have succeeded in our mission. For more information or assistance, visit our website at www.beatcancer.org. Remember to sign up for our educational email series and get your free gift. Join in the conversation on Facebook, Twitter, or Google+, where you can meet others who think just like you. We appreciate all of your feedback and love your suggestions. Please also remember to rate us on iTunes. Your positive ratings help us to get discovered so we can save more lives. Thank you again for listening and best wishes for good health from all of us at BeatCancer.org.